Hello and welcome to this short introduction to weaving. My name is Nikki James and I'm an artist and designer based in London. I'm a textile specialist and work with lots of different skills and processes. Um, and today I'm going to be sharing with you how you can make a loom at home and get weaving with some simple stitches just with the materials you have in the house. So let's get started. When you make a loom from a cereal packet, um, the card can be a little bit thin, so what we're going to do is stick the two layers together just so it's a little bit thicker to work with. So what I'm going to do is cut off these in-between pieces and stick these two bigger sides together. So I'm going to use some double-sided tape to stick them together, but if you've got Pritt stick, you can also use that. There we go, and that leaves us with a nice white surface to work on to make our loom. So we're going to start by finding the middle of our loom. So I'm going to measure it and find the middle. So mine is roughly 19 centimetres wide, so I'm going to find the middle, which is about nine and a half. And I'm going to mark that at either end. Now we're going to measure about a half a centimetre from each end and give ourselves a line. Um, that we're going to snip up to, which will help us mark it out. Okay, so when you're weaving, you don't want to weave too close to the edge of your board, you need to give yourself a bit of space. So I say about two fingers width either side is probably enough space to leave, so I'm going to just give myself a little marker on each side. Now, using my ruler or tape measure, I'm going to measure from the centre um, five millimeter notches and that is going to be where my um, snips are going to be. So always working out from the center so I've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen so I need to have fourteen on each of my four sections. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our scissors and we're going to snip into each of these little markers, including that one in the centre. So just up to your line, no further. Okay, so that is all your snipping done. So what we're going to do is add a little piece here and here to give our warp threads a bit of tension. So you remember the pieces we cut off of our cereal box. You can use the pieces that would normally be used to um, close the box. We'll use one of those for each end. And then we'll also use those other two pieces that were maybe the bottom of the box. So to give it a bit of height, I'm going to be stacking them on top of each other and I'm going to stick them close up to the line. Um, and the same the other end, if you've got a little bit of sticky on, just peel it on back and make sure it's nice and smooth so it doesn't snag on your threads. So that's our loom finished. We are ready to get warping up. So the warp thread is this one here that goes vertically up and down through your weaving and it's what you weave everything through. So it's really important to get this bit right. <laughs> So, um, you don't want to use anything too thick for your warp thread and you don't want anything that's going to be too stretchy because once you finish it will spring and your whole weave will, will behave very strangely. So we're going to work with something um, quite sturdy. So I've got this quite light wool thread that I'm going to work with but you could use anything that you have at home. Um, for example some acrylic wool would work quite well but just nothing too thick. So we're going to start by turning our loom over to the back um, and you're going to need your masking tape for this. So I'm going to take the end of my warp thread and I'm going to start at this corner here. So I'm going to tape my warp thread to the back of my card here and then I'm going to bring it through that first slot to the front. And now we're going to work across in this direction and I'm going to take my warp thread to the exact opposite point here round the back, whoops if I can get hold of it, <laughs> round the back of my slots and into the next one and then I'm going to come down and into the opposite cor a corner, <laughs> into the opposite slot and I'm going to keep working opposite slot to opposite slot all the way across, whoops, <laughs> all the way across my card 
until it is completely full. So once you have run out of slots, you need to put your warp thread, leave a tail on it, turn your weaving card over, and we're going to tape it to the back. So now we're ready to get started with our weaving. So I'm going to start with this wool yarn, and to begin with I'm going to use a piece about the length of my arm, maybe just over. So we're going to start with something called a plain weave um, and this is just straight in and out and in and out over and under each one of these warp threads. So I'm not going to start quite at the end, I'm going to start a few, um, a few threads in. So I'm going to start about here and I'm going to go just over and under as you can see. So then I'm just going to take it right to the end and I'm going to pull this completely through. Now don't get carried away and pull it out. This first one is going to be the trickiest. So this last one I've gone over so I need to go under. So now once you're starting to get a couple of rows you can push them down next to one another like this. And we're just going to carry on and we're going to build up about four rows of this plain weave and then I will show you how to do the tassels. So we've got six rows of the plain weave now and now I'm going to show you how to do the raya knot tassels. A good thing to do to help you cut your tassels to the right size is to get a card um, either something, this is something that had wire wrapped around, you could also use something like a business card um, it's just so that you can cut your yarn to be the same length each time so that your tassels are roughly the same length. What I'm going to do is taking my little card I'm going to wrap around it a few times and make sure I finish on the same side I started on and then I'm going to snip it there. And then I'm going to hold my, I'm going to hold this edge and I'm going to get my scissors in this end and I'm going to snip across. So for our Ryan knot tassels I'm going to use three strands of the yarn that we've just cut and um, for each tassel. So I'm going to need 14 tassels because I've got 28 warp threads. Um, and I'm going to use two warp threads for each tassel. So working away from yourself using two of the warp threads, take the ends and put, push them up in between those two warp threads and this is a little fiddly so I'm going to pull them up through, take hold of the loop at the other end, push those ends through and pull that down to on top of my plain weave and this is going to be a little bit fiddly but there's your first tassel okay so there is my row of the Ryan knot tassels and you can just arrange them so they sit nicely and you can do as many rows of the Ryan knot tassels as you like but what you need to remember is that after every row you will need at least two rows of the plain weave to hold them safely in place so I'm going to do that now I'm going to do two rows of the plain weave using well at least starting off with this tail of the purple yarn that I was using before so I'm just going to make sure that they are pushed right down to sit neatly on top of the plain weave that I did earlier um, and then I'm going to start going with the over under over under plain weave that I did earlier. So I've done about I think about eight 
rows of the blue in just a plain weave and you can see because it's a textured yarn you get a completely different texture in the weave itself which is quite nice. But carrying on with the plain weave technique I'm now going to have a go um, with the same the same technique but using these strips of fabric instead. So I'm just going to unthread my needle um, and leave the tail of that yarn because I'll pick it back up in a minute um, and I'm going to just fold my fabric so I can fit it through the needle. The good thing about these weaving needles is they do tend to have really big eyes on them so if you fold your fabric, depending on how wide the piece you've got is, you should be able to slide them through your needle like that. And then looking at the stitch that I've previously done, the, the last one, um, I've gone under that warp thread so I'm going to go over this time and I'm just going to work in exactly the same way. And if you can't thread your needle, you can certainly do this, just do, do it with your fingers. Um, and I'm just going to slide my fabric through. Mm. When you're working with fabric like this, you may decide that you want to fold it. So I might fold it in half mm. to make it smaller. I think I'm going to leave it wide for this one. Um, and you can also decide if you want to cut your fabric after each row and then secure it in afterwards or if you want to do like you would with the right knot tassels do two rows of your plain weave to secure it in position and then go back the other way now my fabric is definitely long enough to go back on itself so i think that's what i'll do now you can decide here what you want to do if you want to leave it so you end up with a bit of a triangle at the edge that you could maybe fold back and secure afterwards or if you want to pull it through further so that you pull it more flat or if you decide now I really don't like that then what you can do is you can find where your edge is you can cut it and then treat it as two completely separate pieces within your weave like that. So now now that you've put the next piece of fabric in we need a couple more rows of the plain weave to make sure sure it is secure and um, here you can see I've got a bit of a gap so I need to make sure that I push down my stitches um, so that they sit nice and snugly together so I think I I think I might even go back to my dark blue now, I'm not sure, let's have a little think. So now I'm going to show you how to finish off the weave. So we're going to start with, um, we're going to start by needing to take it off the board. So to do that what you'll want to do is really carefully just bend your loom and lift at the top. You can lift each of those loops off the loom. And then we can do the same at the bottom of our board. Really gently. Okay, so now looking underneath our tassels, you can see there are loops here. And until we secure them, this row is going to be a bit loose. So coming back to the top of your weave, and this is why I suggested you finish with a few rows of plain weave, we are going to take each of them in pairs and we are going to gently hold down our weave and pull those threads taut. So you see if I pull one of those it begins to come taut and I'm going to pull it up to that edge. I don't want to over pull it because it will distort my weave. So keeping it nice and flat. Yeah. So there's the first one and then I'm going to go all the way along and pull all of them up. So now I'm going to periodically cut these loops, but we're going to tie them to their neighbours. So I'm going to tie these this one off first, and then I'm going to work my way along. So I'm going to pull that nice and tight, and I'm going to tie a double knot, and these can be woven in afterwards. And there's number one. There's the first two tied off. Okay. And then they've got the next two here. Again, I'm just going to tie them off together. Don't pull it too tight because you'll affect the space within your weave. 
thanks so much for joining me today for this short introduction to weaving. I hope you're pleased with what you've created. No matter what size it is, you've definitely learned some new skills. Um, this is a really great technique to share with other people. So once you feel a bit comfortable with the stitches, maybe you can teach someone else how to use your loom and show them some stitches too. Um, you can find all the resources attached in the attached document. Um, and thanks so much for joining me.